Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's me, R Squad 911 back again with another DIY video, but this time I'm doing it on my 3D printer. Uh, for those of you who know, I purchased a Bamboo Lab X1C uh, just at the end of 2004 in December. I got it in January, and I've been using this almost every day, uh, making Ghostbusters parts, uh, making just stuff around the house. It's literally like having your own Star Trek replicator, except it doesn't make food. It just makes stuff and it takes hours. But anyways, I love this thing uh, until they make an actual Star Trek replica. This is what I'm going to have to be stuck with uh, for now. Uh, but so uh, this upgrade is from BQ. Uh, it's for the AMS and I'm slowly building up parts. Uh, I didn't even know this turned actually. I don't know why that turns. I guess that's to keep the cover open. Huh, interesting. Uh, that's something new that I've learned. Anyways, uh, so they did release the new AMS2 unit, which has active drying, and it has these cool upgraded um, feed necks. Uh, I don't know what they're called. Again, I'm barely a year into 3D printing, so I don't know all the terminology. Uh, so this is going to be a very basic video of how I'm upgrading AMS. So I didn't want to spend 600 Canadian dollars on the new AMS too, because I just got this thing. Um, and then they released something even better. So I've, if you see in here, I've printed all these new uh, desiccant holders. And it does get quite annoying to kind of refill the desiccant and like to rejuvenate uh, the desiccant. Um, so yeah, I wanted an active heater, but I didn't want to spend $600. And if you look over here, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here. Um, I did buy one of these Creelty uh, heaters here, and it holds two spools, and it does feed into uh, the bamboo lab. But it doesn't have active feeding and retracting uh, that uh, the AMS has. So... Uh, Thank God I didn't buy the AMS2 uh, because BQ made the upgrades for uh, the feed necks. And you have the ceramic now because uh, what happens is when you're using abrasive filament like I use, um, like carbon fiber, PLA, and uh, glow-in-the-dark PLA, it's very abrasive. And uh, if you can see on these, it kind of eats the tubes. But that's why I printed these guides that it would eat the tube and not the actual plastic underneath here. Uh, so with the AMS2, they've upgraded it and made these feed parts out of ceramic. And ceramic is a very hard material, especially if it's a, a very true fired ceramic. Um, the filaments are going to have a very hard time wearing that down. or It's going to take years and years, uh, whereas just having these plastic feed necks and meet my upgraded ones with the, uh, the tubes here, uh, it'll take many, many, many hours, but it will be a wear item nonetheless. So having these ceramic pieces in here is going to make it much, much better for longevity. And uh, so that's one upgrade that I wanted from the AMS2. And obviously the next upgrade is uh, the active heating and the drying, uh, which uh, I bought in EIBOS. Uh, I think it's just a two compartment heater. I was going to get the Sunlu one, but that doesn't have like the active uh, uh, actuating vent that allows like the moisture to escape or the hot air to escape to really dry out the filament. So I bought the EIBOS. Um, they have the Tetris and the Dyad or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I'll, I'll update it in a pop-up here in this video. But I bought uh, the Dyad, which was cheaper. It was only 169 US, so like about 210 Canadian. So 210 Canadian plus $5 for these uh, on AliExpress. And my AMS-1 becomes pretty much an AMS-2. Maybe even better because um, it will dry even while it is feeding material. And I don't think the AMS-2 does that. Uh, probably with a firmware update, they're going to change that. But uh, it's not $600 that I spent extra. Uh, I only spent $125, $130 Canadian for it. But today what I'm going to do is we're going to install these. This is the, the BQ Panda AMS guard. You can see here, it's kind of like the things that I 3D printed here. It just fits on top. Um, let's see, let's open this thing up.
and you can see right there they printed this I, I'm not sure what they printed it in but nylon it feels very very strong definitely stronger than PLA and it has this uh, ceramic uh, insert here which is actually quite shiny so that means it's like a fired ceramic in there it should uh, last pretty long and with it being polished it'll help also um, with abrasion so it, uh, the filament should slide in quite nicely so this is what I printed uh, I'll put a link in these these were awesome so if you are not gonna buy these I don't know why you wouldn't for five dollars uh, I would print these things and I've printed about six different kinds and this one ended up being the best uh, so you use the PTFE tube in here and that's what guides it in there so uh, the filament is basically abrasing against this and you can kind of see it's thicker at the top thinner at the bottom because that's where the the filament feeds into and it's kind of been abrasive on it and uh, to install these it's uh, very simple you just take this slide it in through the back and click that down and you're good but you can probably only do that a few times uh, before oop, the PLA starts to break here on the swivel here all right um, like that that one just broke uh, sorry I'll zoom out here this one just broke and you can see there that's how it slides on like so and then this part would slide would click down and these have been great I've been using these for the last six months um, and they have not let me down and of course if you already have oh see that one broke and it fell in there oh no uh, yeah uh, I mean if you've already had damage on them uh, these were great uh, these are great even before you have damage but uh, these uh, BQ ones are going to be even better. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how these fit on. Maybe they, it looks like from the look of it, you slide it in this way. So you kind of angle it down, fit it over. Kind of find center, push it down. And there you go. Oh, that's actually really, really good. Okay, we'll do the next one here. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, so I'll be taking it like this angle, kind of get it cupped on there, and then find where it is going to go in the center and push down. You want to make sure that you center it nicely um, so you don't break any of the sides. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to break them with this material that they printed it out of. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. And, you know, I was, I did tell myself that I wasn't going to buy any more P BQ stuff because I did buy the Panda Jet add-on and it was really screwing up printing uh, PLA silk for me. Uh, everything else overhang-wise, it was printing very, very nicely. But with the silk, it was just cooling it too much that when it would lay down the line, the cooling would just make the silk shrink right away. And so if you're doing fine lines, you were going to get kind of like breaks in it as it was going. So it was quite bad for me. And uh, so basically I uninstalled that and uh, reinstalled the factory Bamboo Lab one. So, I mean, Bamboo Lab, they, they've made an amazing product here. You don't really have to change much. Uh, but they are constantly upgrading, like with the AMS2, uh, with the ceramic pieces. So now that is installed there. I'm going to turn on, turn this thing on. I'm going to fish that piece out of there. There we go. That wasn't very hard. It would have been much harder to get it out if uh, the filament was installed. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to install the silver filament here. Oh, that feeds in quite nicely, actually. I'm going to feed in my PLA mat. I guess it needs to make sure that that is good to go before I install this one. And so far so good, it's not popping that thing off. It's on there pretty solid. You get a nice positive click when you when you put them in. 
Okay, so with this one here, I'm gonna load this in. one in there. I'm not sure if it's actually going to grab these after I put them in. Oh, it did. And I did that one first too. Let's see how that's feeding in there. Actually, really nice. Yeah, once I heard the AMS2 had ceramic, I was like, oh my goodness, that's going to be a game changer for uh, wear and tear. All right, well, this is the last one. See it feed in there. So good. All right. So that is pretty much it. I'm going to obviously start printing stuff uh, later on today and uh, see how it turns out. But so far, so good. I think that uh, it's going to be a game changer for the AMS, especially if you have an AMS one uh, and you just don't want to fork out that extra couple hundred dollars for the AMS two. So you can just spend five dollars on these and spend a hundred and $20 Canadian on um, the uh, I Ibos, Ibos um, heater. You can get the four chamber heater or I or like me get the two chamber. So it would just be one chamber for these two and another chamber for these two, which is pretty awesome because then I can just use uh, PTEG on one side, PLA on the other side. Uh, the Tetris has four individual ones. So if you're printing like all different types of materials, uh, that is awesome too. Uh, but I just don't need that because I mainly just print PLA and PTEG. All right. But uh, yeah, I'll put a link in the description for these ones. Uh, if you just want to 3D print one right away instead of waiting a couple of weeks for these BQ ones to come in because it does come on the slow boat from China. Uh, uh, but these ones were pretty great um, that I've been using for the last six months. All right. So yeah, that's my first 3D kind of printing upgrade DIY video ever so i don't know please like subscribe comment below i don't know if i'm going to do many videos of these uh but uh when i do get the ibos heater i will do a review on that one i'm pretty excited so yeah that's me slowly upgrading my ams to an ams 1.5 maybe 1.75 uh but yeah thanks for watching peace